In the year 1920, the United States made the landmark decision to ratify the 19th Amendment, finally giving women the right to vote. Just four short years later, Miriam Amanda Ferguson, or Ma for short, became the first female governor of Texas and the first elected female governor in the country. Her campaign was monumental. Miriam embraced the common folk image by posing in pictures in her sunbonnet, and many women voters quickly followed suit. Running against a powerful member of the Ku Klux Klan in the primaries, the contest quickly became a race between bonnet or hood. Rousing support from everyday Texans and distinguishing herself from the hate-filled Klansmen, Miriam rose widespread support and won the vote in the primaries and general election. Throughout her career, Ferguson fought for social justice and served as a nationwide role model by insisting on public education reform for the impoverished and taking a firm stand against the Ku Klux Klan. Miriam Ferguson led a traditional life in Temple, Texas as a banker's wife for many years. She was devoted to her home and family, but was not the average housewife. Miriam was born on June 13, 1875 in Belton, Texas to Joseph and Eliza Wallace. She grew up wealthy, attended public schools, and later received private tutoring. Uncommon for many women of this era, Ferguson was also college educated. She attended Salado College and later Baylor Female College. After 16 years of marriage to successful Jim Ferguson, her husband ran for governor and won in the 1914 election. After years of service butting heads with the KKK and rumors of corruption, Ferguson was impeached. Three years later, the ratification of the 19th Amendment gave women not only the right to vote, but to hold public office. It was then that Miriam aimed to restore the honor of her name and continue her husband's fight for Texans by running for governor herself. Ma Ferguson was the first woman to ever be elected governor in the United States. She was a role model for women and girls across the country. My name is Carl McQuarrie. I'm a cultural historian and one of the biographers of the Fergusons, among other things. The idea of a woman running for political office was just unheard of in Texas. When she got her name on the ballot, it made international news. And when she won, it really sent a lot of lawmakers scrambling to make sure it was even legal. But just the fact that a woman could govern a sovereign state as big as Texas was, which was bigger than the one George Washington governed, by the way, uh, that just showed people that women could do it. Ma's accomplishment served as a major feat for women everywhere. The novel idea that a woman could hold a leadership position was not widely accepted, but Miriam made it a point to prevent sexist ideas from affecting her work. She would very publicly, you know, say things like, a woman is just as capable as a man. It all was based, though, on women's needs rather than women's rights. It was about, we need to take care of women, and here's how I'm going to do it. Music was on a case-by-case -case thing. It wasn't like any sweeping large legislation. But that was the way she was. She was the product of her time. The Fergusons were both known for fighting for the common people. The fact that people could relate to the Fergusons is what won both of them their positions. The campaign slogan, Me for Ma, won Miriam two elections. They both fought very hard for the common people, like farmers. We'd call it social justice now, if we had to give it a name. Back then, it was just helping people. Miriam was troubled by the Texas prison systems of the time. She believed that minor offenses shouldn't be punished by cruel treatment and horrendous living conditions. During her time as governor, she granted many pardons to Texas prisoners. The Fergusons were of the Democratic Populist Party, and they believed that the government had an obligation to fight and protect the poor and working class, particularly from the upper class. The Fergusons always said that rich white men didn't go to prison, but only the poor and minorities. This is still an issue that is very pressing in today's society, and Ma Ferguson recognized this problem almost 100 years ago. Ma Ferguson stood for the people who could not fight for themselves. She also fought hard for public education. Miriam Ferguson once said, just as soon and so far as we put into all our schools more humane education and foster the spirit of justice and kindness towards the lower creatures, just as soon and so far we shall reach the root of not only cruelty, but of crime. This is the only way to do it, and that is to go down to the foundation and build up. Her fight for education was one of the strongest throughout her career. She advocated for free textbooks for Texas children, as well as more money for rural schools. 
Thanks to this law, children of Texas were able to learn more efficiently with better, more reliable sources. In 1933, Ferguson passed House Bill 194, a key legislator which ensured the University of Houston would become a four-year college, furthering the availability of higher education for Texas students. Miriam truly cared for the people of Texas. During the 1920s, the Ku Klux Klan had quite a bit of political and social power. They had widespread members, including many in powerful positions such as civic leaders, politicians, and law enforcement officials. The Klan had as many as 100,000 members, so they were able to elect state legislators, sheriffs, and judges, and other local and state officials. There was no better way of promoting and spreading the message of the Klan but then inserting KKK members into trusted positions. This strategy of electing Klansmen was gaining positive momentum for the KKK. By the end of 1922, paid membership increased to about 150,000 paid members. The Klan predicted greater victories in the future, but in 1924, something unexpected happened. The Klandidate, Felix D. Robertson, was defeated in the race for governor by Miriam Ferguson. Miriam passed the anti-mask bill, which prohibited the Klan from wearing their masks in public. This made it hard for the Klan to hold public rallies because they were unable to hide their identities behind their masks. Throughout her term as governor, anti-Klan movements grew significantly. Membership rapidly declined, and by 1928, they were left with only about 2,500 members. During her first term, the Ku Klux Klan lost about 147,500 members in Texas. Miriam Ferguson spent her entire political career advocating for those who could not fight for themselves. Her stand against the Ku Klux Klan was monumental in the group's decline of power. Many say that Miriam was the first of her kind. At this time, a female thriving in such a powerful position was unprecedented. She was very passionate about social issues concerning Texas citizens, and the passion stuck with her forever. She once said, I love politics. I live it, eat it, and breathe it. Once you get it in your blood, you can't get over it. Miriam Ferguson was on the right side of history and spent her time in politics fighting a noble fight. In the same old bonnet with the same blue ribbon on it In the old day by his side That he drove her up to Dover Through the same old fields of clover To become his happy bride The birds were sweetly singing And the same old bells were ringing As they passed the quaint old church where they were wed And that night when stars were gleaming The old couple lay a dreaming, dreaming.